name is Latu Fatiha. I will present about industrial noise pollution associated with its health issue. Noise is defined as an undesired sound that causes physiological and psychological harm to an individual for a short or extended length of time. Industrial activities are classified as primary source of noise. Exposure to excessive amount of noise and surpass specific limit can lead to negative health effects such as auditory and non-auditory. For example, noise-induced hearing loss and sleep disturbance. The industrial noise also can affect the social performance among the workers, for example, stress that can cause headache and sweat. Therefore, there are a few noise pollution prevention, for example, noise training and education program and wearing personal hearing protective device. The Quest Impulse Integrating Sound Meter was used to record the background noise level and the sound power level of machines. The background noise level was measured before the work began for 30 minutes. After the work began, the sound power level of each machine was then measured. The SLM was positioned at a height of 1.5 meters above the ground. The SLM was equipped with a diffuse field microphone. SLM was then put in the workplace center away from any reflective surfaces. Casella calibration model was used to generate constant readings. Next, I will elaborate on the result and discussion of the review paper. Our review paper will focus on a total of three different locations of industrial area which include Petronas Refinery Extension Project of MG3, RCC Plant in Semenye and Co-Generation Plant located in Melaka. All of the industrial noise plant level assessment were being observed and studied toward their noise contour before being interpreted into a form of data graph. As you can see in the first graph, it is determined that Kampung Sungai Udang, which is located nearest to the refinery MG3 plant to result in the highest value of noise level elevation. It is also being monitored that the surrounding region noise contours of the plant is measured to be at an average of 50 dBA to 80 dBA which is still under acceptable value set by the DOE. Although there is an increasing level of noise in certain parts of the surrounding area, some of the monitoring sessions display in a reduction of noise level that happened in certain areas such as Hualan Factory, Kampung Pantai and Sekolah Kebangsaan Sungai Kundur. The second graph shows the current data of baseline noise measurement at RCC Malacca plant. The 15-minute noise level assessment is measured to be ranged from 45.2 dBA to 76.2 dBA during the day and 42.8 dBA to 56.0 dBA at night. The reason why monitoring is being conducted for night and day is because the RCC plant is still in operation for boost time which requires monitoring to still be conducted. For the third graph, two parameters were being determined for the noise monitoring situated at co-generation plant in Semenye, which is the location of the monitoring station itself and the time frame of the monitoring whether it is done during the days or night. However, the analyzed data indicate that the plant operation noise level to be still under the limit regulated by the DOE, which show that the company still compliance with the regulation under whatever condition. The studies will be investigated further to its impact on the health issue by categorizing them as auditory, non-auditory, immunological, and social impact. Auditory health impact is then can be classified into a total of two types which is tinnitus and noise threshold shift. Matheson in his study stated that 10% of American workers suffer with tinnitus in which only 15% of employees exposed to the occupational noise whereas another 5% of workers have never been exposed to. Other than that, a study conducted at a wooden factory in Malaysia indicated that 25.8% of the workers to have a minor handicap with permanent threshold shift between 30 to 40 dBA and another 8.9% had a major handicap with a permanent threshold shift higher than 40 dBA. I'm Shahiruddin Samsudin and I'm going to talk about non-auditory health effects. Non-auditory noise effects are described as all those consequences on wellness and well-being that are induced by exposure to noise with the exception of effects on the hearing organ and effects owing to auditory information masking. For example, is communication problems as stated by Smith and Broadband in 1982. Some of the other non-auditory effects include cardiovascular disease, 
sleep disturbance, and cognitive performance. Study with cardiovascular disease, long-term industrial noise exposure alters the cardiovascular system and generates visible illnesses. Noise exposure raises systolic and diastolic blood pressure, affects heart rate, and stimulates the production of stress hormones. Next is sleep disturbance. Noise has been shown to disrupt sleep in both objective and subjective ways. If there are more than 50 noise occurrences per night with a maximum level of 50 decibel A indoors or more, objective sleep disruption is likely. Then cognitive performance. According to the World Health Organization in 2011, industrial noise causes roughly 45,000 disability adjusted life years to be lost each year in high income Western European nations for children aged 7 to 19 years. Communication difficulties reduce attention, increase arousal, and the impacts of sleep disruption on performance are some of the processes proposed for noise effects on children's cognitions. Next, we move on to immunological effect. Every day, an estimated 24.2 million workers are exposed to potentially dangerous levels of noise, and noise is one of the most common autotoxic stimuli in workplace. Noise stimulates the central nervous system and emotions, putting equilibrium at jeopardy. Noise may stimulate defense responses, boost immune system activity, and produce systemic inflammation and oxidative stress. Social effects that we can get from industrial noise pollution includes impairment with a person's ability to communicate verbally, annoyance reactions and negative social behavior and performance management difficulties. For the difficulty of person's ability to communicate, noise, pol noise pollution makes it difficult to understand regular speech and can result in a variety of personal difficulties, handicaps, and behavioral disorders. Some of these side effects could lead to more accidents, a breakdown in classroom communication, poor academic achievement, conflicts, neurosis, hysteria, and psychosis. As for the annoyance reactions and negative social behavior, annoyance is defined as a feeling of annoyance connected with any agent or condition that an individual believes will have a negative impact on anger, disappointment, dissatisfaction, withdrawal, helplessness, agitation, or exhaustion are just a few of the negative reactions associated with noise pollution. And the last one from me is performance management difficulties. Noise pollution reduces task performance at school and at work, increases errors, and demotivates people. Noise has the greatest impact on reading attention, problem solving, and memory. Increased level of stress-related chemicals have been documented in children who live in noisy environments. Thank you. Noise pollution control approaches are divided into three groups. Firstly is noise control at the generation end. The damaging noise will be reduced if machinery is serviced and maintained on a regular basis. Besides the selection of machinery or equipment that produce less noise due to superior technology is essential in noise reduction. Secondly is noise control at the transmission path. Noise level can be reduced by putting up barriers between the source of noise and receiver. Noise level at the receiver can also be reduced by containing the sound source within panel enclosure. Other than that, the use of appropriate noise absorption material for walls, doors, windows, and ceilings in the building will help minimize noise levels. Lastly is noise reduction with the use of protective equipment, ear muff, ear plug, ear canal cap, and other noise cancelling devices are commonly used for hearing protection. Equipment such as ear muff can reduce noise by up to 32 decibels on average. In conclusion, there are two noise methods that are effectively to be used which are sound level method and Casella calibration model. Next, the results which are Petronas Refinery Station Project MG3, RCC plant in Semenye and Cogeneration plant in Malacca shows that there was an increasing of the current ambient noise level in the local region due to the industrial operation activity. Next, the industrial noise can cause several health effects such as auditory effect, non-auditory effect and immunological effect. Lastly, there are a few ways to control industrial noise which are introduce proper handling and frequent maintenance, putting up barrier between source of noise and receiver and use of protective equipment such as earmuffs.